Hi everyone, it's Christine from the Art Studio. This video looks at the colour wheel and I'm going to show you how to create this basic colour wheel which is suitable for children to follow and to recreate. It's a really good opportunity for them to understand about primary and secondary colours and also how to mix them. To recreate this, what you'll need is some A4 paper or card. You might need some quite heavyweight paper so that the paint doesn't buckle um, on a lightweight paper. You'll also need something to draw some circles, so either a template or I've used just a, a jam pot lid. And you'll need three primary colours which are red, blue and yellow. So I've used this make here which is Liquitex and I've got primary yellow, cerulean blue and crimson red. The first thing you need to do is on a piece of paper and using either a jam jar lid or a circular object is to draw out three circles. So these need to be overlapping and children might need a bit of a hand so that their sort of segments are of a similar size. Just draw around with a pencil so you've got three circles. So as I say I've just used a jam jar lid so I've just drawn that on there. That then divides up the areas that you need to paint in. Then into either a palette or onto a bit of card or a plate, whatever you've got to use, squeeze out your acrylic paint. Try and keep um, a similar amount in each in each well. Um, if you haven't got acrylic paint, you could use poster paint, but acrylic paint's really good for this. And the first thing I'm going to do is to fill in this segment here. I'm going to fill that in with yellow. So when you're working with this, just try and keep your brush strokes in the same direction. And with children, it's quite a good sort of practice to try and get them to work within the lines. So just going to fill this in using primary yellow and trying to keep their brush strokes sort of backwards and forwards um, and keeping the paint even. So I'm not using any water on here. You can water it down, but we want the colour to be quite vibrant. So I'm just sort of layering it on and I'm just going to work up to the pencil lines that you can see. I'm just filling in this segment. Um, another thing to sort of talk to the children about when they're doing this is to try and not overload their paintbrush. So they're trying to keep the paint just on the bristles um, and that will help them sort of control the amount of paint that they're actually using um, and sort of help the final outcome look more of an even finish so not so sort of clogged with lots and lots of paint because you don't really need to so I'm just working working quite quickly I'd probably I'll do this a little bit more carefully but obviously for the purposes of the video I just want to show you so I'm just sort of working quite quickly I'm trying to keep the paint sort of even I think that's enough that will do um, so once you've filled out that first segment and you're happy with it, um, it's really important to clean your brush before you pick up your next colour because you don't want to contaminate the colour. You want to keep the colours in your palette or on your plate clear. So I've just got a little pot of water. I'm just cleaning my brush. And also I've got a um, bit of kitchen paper um, just to clean the brush so I'll make sure I've got all the yellow off so that's fine so it's important that children understand about cleaning their brush then we're going to use the red so the next primary colour we're going to use is red we're going to fill this section in here so again exactly the same way as I did before um, I am working quite quickly with this because as I said I want to just for the purposes of the video kind of show you. Now you can use a bit of water if you think the paint's not sort of moving enough but um, 
you don't really need to for this it can be just just the paint on its own it's fine and I'm just smoothing out the area so that I haven't got sort of blobs of paint um, again trying to sort of work up work up to the lines that I've drawn so that I'm keeping within those um, I mean if I was doing this really carefully I'd probably paint so that you couldn't see the pencil marks but as I say I'm just trying to show you for the purposes of the video really um, I'm going to put a little bit more on there um, I'm just going to go around a little bit more okay so I'm nearly there I'm just going to just do that little bit um, a bit more paint so as I said I am working quite quickly here so I've said about not overloading the paintbrush but I've actually done that myself <laughs> but because I'm trying to get this done so that we can move on to the next one I am working quite quickly obviously you can take care over this and once it's done it looks quite effective and it's something that you can you know children can put up on the wall perhaps and they can look at and it really helps them understand about primary and secondary colours which is really good um, and mixing colours okay so that's my that will that will be fine I think so that's my second primary colour again rinse your paintbrush so that you've got all the paint off um, and um, use a bit of bit of kitchen roll or something just to clean it off because you want you don't want to pick up and contaminate the next colour. Okay, so I think that's I think that's okay. Right, so we go on to the third primary colour, which is the blue. Um, now this blue is I've noticed when I squeezed it out, it's a little bit sort of um, lumpy. It might just be the way it's been manufactured, but these are really good, vibrant colours and really good make. Um, but it's it's fine. It's still paints perfectly well so right, I'm going to fill in this last segment so I'll just show you back on this one so we're doing this bottom one here so again you might be able to see I don't know if you can see it actually but it is a little bit bumpy but it doesn't matter I might have to add a little bit of water with this one just to sort of spread out that sort of lumpy lumpy bit um, but it's probably just the way the, the paint, the binder may be in the paint. But you can see it's a really good blue, really good colour. And the other thing to mention whilst I'm painting this in is that because there's different shades of yellow, different shades of red, different shades of blue, etc. Um, if you were to use lighter colours, so for example a lemon yellow um, or a more of a sort of a, a pinkier red you would still you'd still achieve um, you know a good color wheel but you would have different tones different shades which looks quite effective so if you've got a pack of acrylics you could try that so you could try with different different shades of the primary colors to see the different effects and that's quite useful for children to to have a look at as well because you're going to get um, you know lighter lighter colors so slightly slightly different shades which is quite good right so again I'm trying to you can might be able to see there that was a bit bumpy that or lumpy rather this paint which is fine it still works perfectly okay um, and I'm just working up to these pencil marks and just a bit more so I am overloading my brush a bit too much. I wouldn't ordinarily, I wouldn't be doing that quite so speedy. I'd be taking a bit more time. Um, but I just want to show you for the purposes of this. Okay, so I'm trying to, as I'm painting, evenly spread the paint. So you've got a good even coverage. And the other thing to say about acrylic is it dries really quickly. So that yellow that we did first of all that's nearly nearly completely dry I can see from here um, 
and so that's that's quite good you know that's a good thing that it does dry quickly but as I said if you haven't got acrylic you can use you can use post paints children might have post paints and you still get still get the same effects which would be good but acrylic is really nice vibrant colours and there's lots and lots of different makes that you can get. Right, I'm just going to finish this last bit. Okay, I think that's probably alright. Alright, so you get the idea. Then, again, clean your brush. So, now what we've got is we've got the three primary colours on the page. Um, and then we're going to mix the secondary colours. So, when I talk to children about this, I always start with the, the yellow and the red. Um, and we start up here. So the way this colour wheel works is children should be able to look at the two outer segments and hopefully remember that the red and the yellow mixed together will make orange and the orange is going to go into here. So you can see on this example. So this part here is going to be the orange. So when you're mixing your secondary colours, what you need to do with a clean paintbrush, try and pick up um, equal amounts so into because I'm using a, a palette I've got little a little separate well that I can put this into so I just put a bit of yellow in there and then again you've got to clean your brush again so that because we're going to use the red and the yellow again we don't want to contaminate it and then try and pick up the same amount of, of red um, and then you need to mix them so when you're mixing you need to mix them together so you can only see one colour so I do this with children students so I say keep mixing so you can only see one colour um, so and often if you put too much of one colour and not enough of the other you're not going to have a good sort of representation of the colour you need. So that's quite a good orange. I don't know if it might look darker on the camera um, but I can see that there's a definite difference between the red and the orange. So I'm just going to paint that into that segment. So exactly the same as before. Again I'm painting it in quite quickly so I'm not taking an awful lot of care here. Um, and I'm painting up up to those drawn lines okay and then you want to keep this center segment free so you just go in up to there so this is where if you know if you're doing this with children just make sure they are painting in the right bits um, so it might get a bit carried away and go down into the middle bit and we want to leave that till last so try and smooth the paint out as you're going along so I'm just going to go, it's a bit bumpy there because I've put a bit too much paint. So I'm not being following what I said about keeping <laughs> keeping your paint uh, on the bristles. But that's because I'm trying to sort of quickly go through it. Right, so it's spreading really nicely the paint. Now obviously try and work up to that line, try and keep the paintbrush sort of straight and as you go either moving in in try and move in the same direction with the paintbrush I might just put a little bit more down there just so that we've got so that it's quite sort of spread evenly I think that's probably okay I'll just get that bit there yeah so that gives you an idea so now we've got the first of the secondary colors that I wanted to do so we've got orange so children should be able to see that red and yellow makes orange. Then we're going to move down this way. So we're going to do the yellow and the blue. So it would be this segment here. So you can see on here. So this is the green. So in another, if you're using a paint palette like I am, um, just in another available well. So I'll just go down here. Um, try it again, try and pick up the same amount of paint, so a bit of yellow like so, and then clean your brush, really important to clean your brush um, and just like I said, just have a bit of I don't know, kitchen roll or 
tissue or something just to clean your brush so that you haven't got any paint on it and um, then we're going to pick up the blue so again try and have sort of similar amount and then start mixing until you can only see one color so this makes a really nice making a really nice green so I've got to keep mixing that because you can see there's still bits of yellow in there I can still see bits of blue as well um, and I'm just going to give that a good mix until I'm happy with that yep that looks okay maybe a bit more okay so that's pretty good so we're going to move on to this one now so again within the lines um, and just try and work up to that that segment I can see that that yellow is um, I think that's completely dry now actually because it will dry fairly quickly so if you haven't got a heavyweight cartridge paper um, you could use card and you can use sort of normal drawing paper but what will happen is the paper might buckle a little bit so I mean it won't matter too much because this is just sort of for experimental purposes but um, it does look better if you've got a heavyweight paper and as I say you might want to put this up children children might want to sort of put it on their bedroom wall or something and I'm just going to put a little bit more there so I'm just working oops that's fine I think right so I'm just going to sort of smooth that out okay so that's our second primary colour uh, secondary colour sorry right last one is this segment here now I always find this is the trickiest one to do because this is purple so red and blue making the purple um, it's really important to get the equal amounts so um, I'm just going to put a bit of red first of all clean my brush um, depending on the on the actual shades of of colours that you're using, shades of primary colours, you might find um, that this can look, it can go a little bit sort of brown in colour. So that's why it's really important to get the same equal amounts. So I'm just going to start mixing. So again, mix until you can only see one colour. So that's coming through quite nicely actually that's quite a nice purple um, if you put too much red try and put a bit more blue um, but I don't know if you can see that really but that's quite nice right so paint in that last middle segment um, again same as before so I'm just trying to work up you might also find with this, once it's dried, it might look a bit lighter because I do find sometimes once the acrylics dry that they they look a little bit lighter, especially with the sort of the purple. So because of the camera, I don't know, it might look if I just put a bit of water in that. It might look a bit sort of brown, but it's it is a purple. What I'll do is I'll put a photograph of this onto my Instagram page because I think it's quite nice to see a photograph image of, of things just to kind of have another look. Um, and then hopefully you'll sort of see that it is quite a nice purple. Okay, so I'm nearly done. So let's just do, might just put a little bit more on there actually. Okay, um, just a bit more there. So you can see that, you know, I've not, I've not kind of gone up to, to these sort of curves as carefully perhaps as I, as I would do. It's just like I said, just for the purposes of the video really, because you can, if you're doing this, you can go up to the, um, to those sort of segment curves so that you can't see any of the pencil marks but for, for the idea of understanding the colour wheel I think it 
I think it works quite well. Right, so there we go. So we've got our three primary colours and our three secondary colours. Now, the last thing is the centrepiece. Now, as I said, this is a really basic colour wheel and other colour wheels go into a lot of depth about tertiary colours. There's a lot more colours and a lot more um, shades and tones that you can mix. But because this is for children, I think this is a good starting point. And the last thing that we're going to add in the middle is the mixing of the three primary colours and that will make brown. So what I'm going to do, I'll do what I did before, I'm going to stick to keeping um, equal amounts of the three primary colours. So yellow, a bit of red and then a little bit of blue into one well and mix it all together and you say mix in three colours here so children need to keep mixing till they can only see one colour okay so that's looking a little bit green so what I'm going to do I'll put a bit more red in there that's better and mix it a little bit more keep mixing so you can only see the one colour that's better okay so that's quite good and I'm just going to paint in the centre so this is this is the brown in the centre so again just kind of going up to going up to those pencil marks trying to keep my brush strokes in one direction I mean you can where they're drying you could also go over this because they're, they're dried and in your palette you've, you've got your colours mixed up so you could give them a sort of second second coat which I might do actually and then I could put this photo onto the Instagram to show you show you the final result as it were um, but that's quite good in the centre and that's the last piece I'm just going to work up to that bit because what's quite nice if you do this very carefully you can you can paint it so that you can't see the original pencil lines um, it gives it quite a nice finished overall finished look. I might just put a bit more paint on that bit. Just do that. Yeah, I think I'll I'll give these another another coat once the video stopped, and then I'll put a photograph onto Instagram to show you. Okay. So there we are, and that's finished. So. Um, as I said, this is a really good sort of starting point for children to understand the colour wheel um, and to get them used to primary and secondary colours and also colour mixing. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to my channel and please add comments. Bye.